I'm Brian Doyle. My home is always deep red. I don't know if I've ever had any other way of looking at music except passionately. I mean, I could play anywhere and still, my home is always deep red. I am so fortunate to be able to live in Cape Breton doing a job that I absolutely love. I play music for a living. Like I was raised in a, in a Celtic home. Celtic music was, Cape Breton music was the norm. It was, my mother was a uh, and is quite a famous uh, pianist in that world. And so I got, at an early age, I got to meet all of the players in the Celtic scene. And I, I grew up listening to them. So I, every one of those were, were inspirational to me. Uh, then I got into, of course, when I started playing, I dissed that totally and ended up playing rock and blues. And then pick a guitar player. They're all uh, I can basically say I'm a product of every every one of those I've heard. So I mean, uh, it's impossible to say one or two or three. Or it's there's so many. Well, yeah, I do write my own material. Um, I, I have been since many many years. Before I actually got on stage, I was writing a piece of music uh, that stayed with me for many years. It was a detuned thing and. And uh, it always kind of haunted me, and just, it wouldn't go away, in other words. And I think I was 13 or 12 when I wrote that. I ended up recording it on an album when I was uh, in my 30s with somebody. Uh, and it's uh, inspiration. It's always there. If I pick up an instrument, I'm writing something. I don't always record it, I don't always remember it, but the idea of it stays. It's just, I could probably sit and do an album any time, day or night, just sitting there playing. It just, I'm, it's, it's inspiration is everywhere. If I didn't have music, if I wasn't a musician, a professional musician playing as a living, then I would probably be doing crane work or bulldozing or carpentry. I love doing carpentry. I love working with wood. I built, I built this cabin in my spare time, which it took a couple of years, but we did it. And it's not that it's any great feat, but the idea is, is it's, so, it's just as nice as playing music to some degree. You're creating. I'm Brian Doyle. Very lucky to be sitting on the deck of a cabin. My wife and I build, how many years ago? About six years ago. No, more than that. Seven, eight years ago. And we spend every summer here looking out over the ocean uh, in Inverness, Cape Breton. Um, and did I say I was lucky about that? It's perfect. In your opinion, are you in any way unique or unusual? Am I unique or unusual? No, I'm not. What about in your music? Do you consider yourself to be someone outstanding or, again, unique or unusual? Uh, in my music, um, outstanding maybe only in the, the fact that I've been doing this a long time. Uh, unique or unusual, no. Uh, I'm basically a, a product of of many years of listening and playing. So, I mean, I, I think all musicians are that. Unique is, or unusual, I believe would be on the other viewpoint, not ours. We just do what we do. Do you think that you can teach someone to have the same passion as you when they play music? Teach passion to play music, that's interesting. Um, no, but I can uh, show a person that they have that passion. Um, when people come to me to teach them, it's uh, they they want something. They want to learn something, and and I believe that uh, the passion is there in the first place. It's just up to us as teachers to infect it, make sure it's bigger, show them that it's there. So I think in, in a way we can teach them, but it has to be there originally. Do you have passion for music? Absolutely. So how do you know passion. that? When did you first discover that you had special passion for music, Brian? Oh, when I discovered it? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a tough one, but I think it was always there. I don't know if I've ever had any other way of looking at music except passionately. 
I remember being three, two and three years old and uh, trying to play my mother's piano. <laughs> I guess that's passion. So how many years have you been involved in the music industry? Wow, how many years in the music industry? Let me see, 40 plus. I think the uh, first time I was on stage, I was 13, playing in a rock and roll band, one of the few around here at the time, and uh, never looked back. So would you say that there have been some cornerstones or some major accomplishments through these years, something that you can feel proud that you've accomplished? Is there anything you can talk about? Oh. The things that you've done in the past. There are lots of things that I'm very proud about. Um, Every time I, I get to what I consider another level in playing, is that's unbelievable to me. It's like, oh, I, this is great. I enjoy this. It's good. Or uh, the first time I decided to be say yes to a musical directorship scenario in theater or on stage, or uh, the first time I put a band together on my own as my own, and. Uh, uh, I guess even the first time somebody asked me to play for them. It's all, all these things are memorable and, and I'm proud of all of them. What about a specific accomplishment like the music we talked about earlier that you recorded with uh, Celtic Rock? Is there something you want to talk oh, about I'm that? Sure. Uh, I'm very proud of a band. Uh, I started uh, in the 90s, late 90s called Greylock and it was all local people. Um, I, I, I decided I wanted to hear a particular type of music a certain way and uh, got the people and the players involved and, and uh, they all agreed to come with me which was really a, a cool thing for them to do for me and we spent four over four years uh, playing together and, and uh, making a very tight unit of music and then finally I had the music together that I wanted to in my head and we recorded uh, in our home uh, Denise and I and Mary Marie and uh, we took it, got it mixed and mastered and that limited uh, release scenario but it was very well accepted and, and still today people ask me about it and, and want to get copies and things like that. Uh, one person told me recently that uh, this, this, this album has life, it, it'll, it'll last a long time he said and I'm th very proud of that. Somebody saying that to me is something I, I basically uh, created will be there after me. Who would you consider to be your inspirations? Oh my goodness, man. There are so many. Uh, early on, like I was raised in a, in a Celtic home. Celtic music was, Cape Breton music was the norm. It was, my mother was, uh, and is quite a famous uh, pianist in that world. And so I got, at an early age, I got to meet all of the players in the Celtic scene. And I, I grew up listening to them, so I, every one of those were were inspirational to me. Uh, then I got into, of course, when I started playing, I dissed that totally and ended up playing rock and blues. And then, pick a guitar player. They're all, uh, I can basically say I'm a product of every every one of those I've heard. So, I mean, uh, you, it's impossible to say one or two or three, or it's, there's so many. Are there events in your everyday life that inspire your music, things that, you know, you, you, you find yourself in situations and that triggers, you know, some musical hmm. writing process. Do you, do, you, do you write your own material? Yes, I do. Okay, well, yeah, I do write my own material. Um, I, I have been since many, many years. Before I actually got on stage, I was writing a piece of music uh, that stayed with me for many years. It was a detuned thing and, and it, it always kind of haunted me and just it wouldn't go away in other words and I think I was 13 or 12 when I wrote that. I ended up recording it on an album when I was uh, in my 30s with somebody uh, and it's uh, inspira It's always there. If I pick up an instrument I'm writing something. I don't always record it, I don't always remember it but the idea of it stays. It's just I could probably sit and do an album any time day or night just sitting there playing. It just, I'm, it's, it's inspiration is everywhere. When you say when I say inspiration comes from everywhere, it's so true. But it's I am so fortunate to be able to live in Cape Breton, doing a job that I absolutely love. I play music for a living. I've done other things, of course, but 
uh, music is my go-to all the time. And that in itself is inspirational. What would Brian Dole be doing if it wasn't music? <laughs> Probably driving a bulldozer or a crane or something. I always love vehicles and machinery. And uh, do, do, do you, would you mind saying that if I if it wasn't for music, I would probably be? Well, <laughs> I don't I mean, want to say it like that because there's nothing wrong with driving a crane. I, if it wasn't for like, if I didn't have music, if I wasn't a, a musician, a professional musician playing as a living, then I would probably be doing crane work or bulldozing or carpentry. I love doing carpentry. I love working with wood. I built I built this cabin in my spare time, which it took a couple of years, but we did it. And it's not that it's any great feat, but the idea is, is it's so it's just as nice as playing music to some degree. You're creating. Do you get good feedback from the audience and do you look for that feedback or do you just uh, carry on doing what you what pleases you? Feedback is absolutely essential. I mean there's not a musician out there, I think, that doesn't respond to the posit positive scenarios coming from the audience. And it, and it makes you play that much better. You, it thrills you. Uh, audience is everything. I mean, who are we playing for? We create on our own. That's, that's something that I think is private to some degree. Uh, but when you're on stage, you're, you belong to the audience. That's who that you're there for that reason. So, yes, you respond very quickly. And, immediately. We uh, talked earlier and I didn't record it. It had to do with uh, mixing and mastering your music and how important it was for you to have absolute control of the process. So I guess one of the things I wouldn't mind asking you is how, how controlling a guy are you when it comes to your own material? In other words, you need to have absolute hands-on so no one tweaks or changes anything that you've created. I uh I need control of, of music that I've created. Yes, I, I, uh, there's not much point in, in giving over control of what you were, you were trying to create because it's coming from your head. That, that's, you can't describe to somebody over a telephone that this is what I want to have happen on this particular recording and then expect them to go do that. They're going to do it to the best of their ability, but what it's in their head. So you have to be there. You have to have uh, effect of what's happening in all the changes of your music through the recording process. Now, saying that, there are incredibly good people out there that have things to add to what you do and you'd be a fool not to listen to that or not to uh, allow them the changes that they wish to make. Uh, just if for no other reason than to A, B it against what you have. So you have to have an open concept when you do it, but you have to be there. You cannot just send it away and hope it comes back the way you, you want it to. What current projects are you working on now that we can maybe mention? Is there anything that is in the future that you're, you're shaping now, whether it's from a directorial or a musician? Well, uh, uh, currently there's a lot of projects I'm involved with that, uh, to, to speak about. One going to happen very, uh, very soon, in another week or so. Uh, we're doing uh, uh, Elton John Songbook, it's called. I'm the musical director, and we're, uh, Darren Martin is coming from uh, Newfoundland, and we're going to do that show at Strass Bay Place, and that's, that's a, a great show. It's going to be a wonderful time. I just started my very first solo CD, uh, one of three that are in my head. Uh, I haven't had time to get back to it. We just started about two weeks before we moved here for the summer. Excuse me. And um, we, uh, so I hope to get that done by fall. And it's going to be a kind of a Celtic, acoustic Celtic bass scenario. Uh, then there's a couple more, another electric project uh, I'm going to be doing. Um, hopefully recording some more, a little more rocky stuff later on, like a little rock-based fusion. God knows where that's going yet. With some friends, and uh, then Scott McMillan and I are are talking about another album, our second album to come out. Uh, probably start that this winter. Uh, there's another show in uh, December. I'll be the music director for in Strass Bay Place again. So there's always something on the go. I'm going to backtrack for a minute. Sure. Maybe you can talk about your connection to, to Cape Breton. Like how and, and why are you where you are? Like what what's the connection between you and the land here? 
the connection between me and Cape Breton, well, well I was born here. Uh, I, my father, Irish, Doyle, my mother, Chisholm, Scottish, uh, long lines coming from Scotland and Ireland, uh, steeped in history, our, and our background is well known to all of us in the family. We're brought up knowing uh, who we are, where we come from. But Cape Breton is uh, generational for us. And so we've been on the other side, uh, it's got to be at least five or six generations, same as on my father's side. The land uh, Denise and I live on, Amerigree, is inherited as uh, probably we are maybe six generation on that land. Uh, so the, the, the history of this place is, well, it's home. It's, it's, uh, we never lose touch with our history in Scotland or Ireland, as is the Celtic way. Uh, but uh, I can't imagine being anywhere else. In my travels, I've met many talented musicians, performers in places like the Caribbean. And I've also met directors and producers. I wanted to whisk them away from that environment and bring them back to New York or Hollywood. And uh, in their opinion, they were wasting their time because they were not maybe appreciated or their talent was greater than the place that they were performing at. Do you ever get that suggestion to you? You know, like, what are you doing here? Why don't you explore elsewhere? I, since I was probably 18 years old, I've always had the people from various parts of the world saying, well, why don't you come to Chicago? Why don't you come to LA? Why don't you, uh, you're good enough to play there. Well, thank you. I, I was, that was a, always a kind thing to hear. Uh, and it pr would be fine, but what would be the point uh, of, I mean, I, I'm fine where I'm at. This is, this is okay. It's, it's a bit of a struggle here. <clears throat> it's a harsh place. Uh, uh, it empties in the wintertime, population-wise. But it's, uh, it's, uh, I mean, I could play anywhere and still my home is Cape Breton. And I have. I've traveled quite a bit playing. But my home is always Cape Breton. I mean, that's that's where I'm seated. That's where uh, I can't imagine being away from too, uh, too long. It would have to be short, short things. I guess what I'm driving at next is how important is family to you? Family is everything. Or, or your roots, you know, here. Oh, everything. Uh, I, I roots here and family is uh, it's who you are. Identity is everything. I mean, it's it, it, uh, if you if you don't have to guess at where you came from. I mean, it's it's a, a lot of people have that possibility in that scenario. But I'm lucky. I know exactly where I come from. I know uh, where my parents come from and their parents before them. I know my wife's parents. It's it's, uh, it, it's a rooted scenario. So there's a certain stability that you that you that you feel like just yeah there's stability is there absolutely. having your feet firmly planted on the ground to a large degree yes my feet are planted in this ground and uh, because of it uh, I can be anywhere else in the world and be fine with that because I know this is here for me um, having this allows you to be away from home for a while because you know you can always return to this and that's a big deal. Are you okay with everything so far? Oh yeah, that's fine, man. Well, what do you say to those who say uh, uh, you can't teach uh, talent? You know, like no, no, no one taught uh, Jimi Hendrix to play. Um, you, you, you teach. Yes. And you have students. I do. And you obviously see talent wherever it might be, very sporadic, but you, you recognize it. But so, so people will will send their children to a, you know an instructor such as yourself, but. You know, do you really believe that that you can instill whatever you know, a technical skill maybe, but not a real passion? I started with that question, yes. and I'm coming back to it. Well, passion is. I, I find that I'd say a large majority of the people that come to me to be taught, the passion is there in the first place. There, there has to be a reason to come to me. Why, why would they? Why would they do that? So I have to accept the fact that they want to learn. Now, there are situations, of course, where the child or, say, a younger person, more, uh, more than an older person, is driven to come to me by their parents. Well, you should learn this. And that's okay. They'll never forget what, they, what they've learned, even if it's two lessons. But the passion and, and the, uh, the talent that's in people, I, I firmly believe everybody is born with the capability of being as talented as the next person in their chosen musician scenario. 
uh, it's programmed out of us through the years, through various things. I wanted to do this, I did that, I, uh, I was good in math, so I decided to carry on, or I was a science man, you know, and that's fine. The, I think the musicianship or the, the individual talent, it, it gets stepped on, it gets kind of put in the background, and then uh, we lose a little bit of the passion. But I think if we get kids young enough and give them the opportunity, I think we'll find out that almost every one of them is born with talent. And it's, I really do believe it's up to all of us to kind of push that as much as we can early. I have, I have a 76-year-old man that called me for two years uh, to see if I could fit him in to, to uh, teach, teach him how to play. He'd never played guitar before. The passion this man has to learn is unbelievable. Uh, I have six-year-old kids. It's un like, I mean, it's, it's there. Everybody has it, like I say. Uh, so I, it's, it's a joy to be teaching people like that. And it's very, very seldom I'm disappointed. Is there anything you can just maybe say about the music industry in general? You know, whether it's it's an industry that worth pursuing, or is it is it difficult to 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 you know uh, overcome obstacles or, 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 or be discovered for what you truly you know are? Well, that's uh, that's a multifaceted question. There's a, there's a lot of answers in everything you asked. Uh, the industry has something to enter. Well. Your key word there before is passion. If you have the passion for it, of course it's worth entering. It's it's what you want to do. That's what you you, you do it. You find a way. The industry itself is in flux. Uh, it always has been, but right now it's confusing. Uh, more so to those that have been there, and now everything's changing. With digital technology. It's not the same as it was. Uh, it's more immediate. It's more intense. It's more one minute rather than 45 minutes. Uh, so those of us that are from the old school, we'll use that cliche, are having to adapt, not necessarily our music, but our uh, skills in, in uh, production and our skills in reading the audience. So, and the, but then the younger people are uh, coming up with no fear of this. So therefore, uh, it's, not a big deal for them as it is us and, and but the industry like I say I, I think the key word is confusing nobody really knows how to become a success but then as I say that I think back when I was uh, a teenager thinking you know the bright lights in the big city kind of thing in your head it was confusing back then too how do you do it we don't know you just it's luck it's timing it's a good product but a lot of people with good product don't make it blah blah it's an old story that's repeating itself it's just in flux okay well I've covered pretty well all the things that I was uh, hoping to cover I wonder if there's anything else you need to uh, to express or say without my direction no not really I'm, I'm fine yeah? yeah Are you happy yeah absolutely. you know I'm gonna ask you to play something anything right <laughs> 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 okay. Anything, something, anything. You want so, mandolin? Sure, anything. Okay. So while we've got our cameras rolling, you might as well just do it now. Mandolin. Okay, my other... Uh. Do I need to put a mic to it? Will you feel better if it's... If it's a... I think it's fine. Let's see, hang on. One sec. I'll do a... What's in my head right now, mandolin, is an old pipe. Scottish Highland pipe tune. I heard since I was a kid.
<laughs> it goes on. Thank you, Brian. Wonderful. Let's My go pleasure. Let's stop.